Hey guys, Dell here from Dell's Rigging and Crane Tips. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't posted for a couple of weeks. Well, the main reason is because I found out my missus was pregnant again. Yay! Nah, jokes. I'm pretty stoked. But, you know, took me by surprise, man. So today, um, I'm going to do tips about not getting pregnant. Nah jokes but i am going to do some tips today and what it is about is i had some comments about my center of load um video which was handy but there's still a lot of talked about on center of load there's a lot of aspects that um i've missed and a lot of questions people have uh raised and sent me so um i guess the first question or the first topic is why the center of load is hard is because we uh, in the crane you have boom deflection now what boom deflection is is that when you pick up weight and if you've got boom out what happens is when you're picking up the weight the boom bends down because of the weight because the boom's flexible the boom's not just a hard rigid bit of steel it's flexible and so it pulls down and it makes your radius go further out that's boom deflection now i've got something here this is the end of my fishing rod one of my smaller ones now if this was the tip of the boom here and we were picking up weight it would bend and it would come down and the top of the boom would get further away from the center of the slough and your radius would increase when the weight goes on. And that's exactly what happens to your boom when you're putting weight on. And that's why I said on your computer, on your computer, always just keep your radius on the same radius. So if your rigger says, oh, yep, it's good at 10 meters, that's your center, bro, that's bang on. When you winch up, the boom comes down because of the deflection and your radius will increase so what you have to do is you have to boom up to keep it at that same radius and then if you boom up too far then you will winch up and then it'll bring it down to that same radius but your computer will always tell you when it's at 10 meters so that's what we're talking about that's what boom deflection is because the booms aren't rigid the more you got out the more it bends like this fishing rod so that's what you got to think of it as. Now, one guy asked me, and I'll bring it up here. He's a good old mate. Don't know him. But he said, good stuff, mate. Can you comment on boom deflection? Just did, bro. For big slew cranes. I was taught to have the hook a little closer to the crane to compensate for the boom deflection. All right, mate, let's tackle that problem. Now, if your crane operator works like that, if he goes, hey, man, can you compensate for my boom deflection? Meaning, meaning, since you already know when heaps of booms out that it's going to come down a meter, what he's saying is you compensate for that. So if the center of load is here, you come back a meter and you say the center of load is there to the crane operator. And then when he pulls the weight on, it automatically comes down to center. Now that's another way of doing it. But it comes down to the preferences of your crane driver and who you work with. So who do you work with? If your crane operator goes, hey, can you compensate for my deflection? Well, then you guys do that. But just communicate about what you want to do. If your crane operator goes, hang my chains into the center of load first, because then I know that we're centered there, then do that. If your crane operator goes, just tell me when you're center, like pick up the load and get my hook center under the boom, and he wants to do it that way, do that. So the big thing here is communication. Walk up to your crane operator's cab and be like, hey, bro, um, how do you do your boom? To flip? Do you want me to compensate for it, man? Uh, do you want me to just hang the chains in the middle first or do you want me to just have a look once you got a little bit of weight? And then he'll he'll tell you what his preference is 
And so just go from there. So the big thing is, is communication. Have a talk to your crane opener. What do you prefer? You know, because the last thing you want is doing something that annoys him or vice versa. And it could have all been fixed by just communicating. So whatever tickles your fancy with um, getting your center. Now, another thing too is, is back to the fishing rod. The less boom you've got out, say you've got no boom out and you've just got your first boom section just there so you've got nothing out you're going to have less boom deflection so if you're compensating you're going to have to compensate only a little bit but if you just get it in center then you don't have to worry about it if you've got two sections out you're going to have a little bit more deflection all right if you've got three four if you've got five if you've got full stick you're going to have max deflection, bras, So you have to compensate more. That's why the compensating bit's a little bit, you know, I don't prefer to go that way. I prefer to just get the center from the chains underneath the load and then use the get the operator to use the computer to keep you at the 10 meter mark or whatever the mark you make. So that's just another thing to... Um, just to be wary of, the more boom you have out, the more deflection. The less boom, the less deflection. Because there's so much um, boom sections in the one thing, it's not going to bend as much. Alright? Now last of all, um, working close to a slew crane. So if you're working close to a franner or close to a slew crane, your directions don't have to be quite uh, so so obvious because he can see you right there. So if, so if you're just five meters outside of the cab and he can see you and the load crystal clear, I mean, if if, if that's me, I'm just I just point to the load and say, bro, we're picking up that next and just point to it. He can get in the center, he can see the load. You don't have to micromanage him to the load because he can see you there. Now, the difference between that and if you're on a big slew crane, so say you're on a 500, or if you're on a like a, you know, a 120, 130, say you're on 200, and you've got all the stick out, and you've got flying needle on, and you're 30, 40, 50 meters away, then you can be a little more articulate, you know what I mean? You can get them in, you can fine tune them, you know, jib down, slew left a bit, because he can't really see up there, he can't gather the distance of his jib, and so that's when you need to be more um, Nazi, you know, on, on your directions and control him more, you know what I mean? And then again, if you're blind, if he can't actually see where he's lifting, if he's behind a brick wall, if he's behind a big pre precast panel, or if he's up on a deck far away with all his boom out, that's when you have to be in 100% control. That means you give him a running commentary. Hey man, you need to jib down five meters. All right, four meters, three meters. All right, one meter. Easy on the jib and hold the jib there. All right, I need you to slew left two meters. Nice and easy, mate. Yep, that's one meter, one meter left. Keep going. Easy on the slew. Hold the slew there. All right, you need to come down on your hook. Five meters, mate. You know, give it to me, medium pace. Yeah, keep coming down. Yep, two meters to go. All right, got you in hand. Yep, keep coming and stop. Full running commentary if he's blind, all right? That means that you're saying everything that's happening and make sure you say what, tell him what you're lifting in a rough way when, when you're blind. I've gone over blind before, but I probably need to go over it again. What you're lifting, rough weight, because then if he can see that you're going over that rough weight, maybe it's stuck on something. So that's the last thing. You don't have to be so Nazi with your commands and so controlling with your commands when you're up close, close to the crane. He can see where he needs to go. You're right there. When you're further away, you know, with all the jib out and you're 30, 40 meters away, yeah, get a bit, you know, tell him, definitely tell him, you know, get your jib precise. He could probably still see the slew, but get his slew in because you're so far away, you know, he needs you there giving precise commands. And then when he's blind and can't see anything, total takeover. You be as particular as you want. 
all right? Running commentary, painting the picture. We need to get a slew left 10 meters and start jibbing down at the same time. Yep, eight meters on your slew, eight meters on your jib down. Keep it going, you know? Running commentary, give them everything. The bird's just flown by, mate. Yep, keep coming. You know what I mean? Quite tight in here, mate. So just come down slow, and then in his head he's like, "Oh, it's tight, you know. I need to get the need to get the hook down and and go a bit slower because he's just told me that it's tight. He's painted me a picture. He's been descriptive. I can see what's happening in my imagination, and I can't even see. Man, this guy's good. You know what I mean? And so that's what you guys need to do. So that's it on your burn deflection. Hope I answered your questions. Maybe um, you know this is a good example with the fishing rod." But, you know, I hope it all helps. Start getting your thinking, you know what I mean? There's a lot of rules out there people just abide by, but they don't actually know why they do. They just go, oh, well, that's the rule, you know? So, you know, I just follow the rules, but, you know, don't even think about it. Start thinking about these rules. Start thinking about the, why they're in place, why they're good, why they're not. Why is it this way? Are we being too safe? Are we not being too safe? Safety is always good. So it's, but, but I just want you to start using your mind and start actually thinking about things. What actually works? What doesn't? You know, it, it, and, and, and that's what these things are about, you know. How to do things the logic way. How, how to do things, you know. How, how to talk on a radio. In real life scenarios. You know, you always see the communication books and they've got your signals like slew left, you know, it's not just that. There's more to it than that. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to get you, as, you know, loco on. That's what I want to get you sussed on is how to do things the practical way that actually works in real life scenarios. You know what I mean? Another thing too, if you've got certain rules and stuff on site that you have to abide by, please abide by all the rules of your site, your state, and your thing. Anything I say on here that goes against your rules or anything, don't listen to me. You've got to keep your job. You, you follow your rules and regulations on, on all your jobs in your country, all right? I'm just saying, and, and I don't want to focus on rules, regulation things. I just want to focus on um, you guys, how to do stuff better, more efficiently, and get the most out of uh, your skills and use of your skills. That's what I'm focused I don't, I don't, I don't want to go down the legislation, the legislation, legislation um, route. I don't want to go down the technical route, you know what I mean? I just want to uh, show you things, show you tips which uh, can improve your skills, cut out you know, less time wasting, and so you can get to your result faster. That's it. So, boom deflection. Hope this helps. Like this video, subscribe here. Dows Rigging and Crane Tips. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah.